Hi, this is Andrew. Thanks for joining me. This video covers all of Lab 1162 in the CCNA2 course, uh, which is switch sec security configuration. This is most of the material that's also covered in Packet Tracers 11.1.10 and 11.6.1. Uh, I'll try to go through the lab step by step to show you the configuration, and as I'm doing that, that should help you if you're doing those Packet Tracers. So, to get started, um, the lab actually, I went down too far, the lab starts right here and we have a router, R1, a switch, switch 1, a switch, switch 2, PCA, PCB. And I should have all of these plugged in according to the labels on here. So uh, generally we're going to configure um, configure the network, configure R1, our cable network, configure R1, configure and verify basic switch settings. Then we're going to go in and configure a VLAN, configure the switch virtual interface for the VLAN, um, then configure a couple of other VLANs uh, with different names, um, and then some specific switch security settings in part three. So we will go through step by step. Uh, I just want to have my notes ready. So there we go. Uh, first step, cable the network as shown. And obviously in a physical network, this would be a very different cable. You know, cabling would look like this. Um, we would have a couple of switches, a couple of PCs, and a router all cabled together. This is what it looks like. So we've done that part. Uh, initialize the devices. They turn on as soon as we uh, drag them out. So now I'm going to... Load the configuration. So there's nothing we configure on R1. We're just going to load this configuration. I will start by opening the command line. Um, no, I don't want the configuration dialog. So it even has enable and configure terminal. So I don't even have to get into enable mode. I'll just grab all of this and I will copy and then go over here and paste and if everything worked we should be um, verify the running configuration r1 using show ip interface brief so we are going to exit let's go all the way to here and we're going to do show ip interface brief and we have Gigabit 001, 192.168.10.1, uh, manual up, we have a loopback interface. And if we went back to the beginning though, that's what we should see there. So we, and that is really gets to the last settings. They, that is up, it's green. So the router is configured properly. And um, just so, because they say verify, it matches the table. 192.168.1 is 10.1 and 19 and uh, 10, 10, 1, 1. We have those. So we should be done with the router for now. Um, next up, configure and verify basic switch settings. And I will, uh, since I have notes for everything, I will go through all of them. Um, at least that's the plan. That might change as we go. So I am, and as you see, we got a uh, interface F05 is now up. Um, that was from the router. So enable, configure terminal, and uh, first thing up is um, configure host name for switches. And I guess I will try to do them side by side and we'll see how that works out. Now I already have host names on there. So we have switch one, switch two, I have labels. Um, and as you can see, I have host names. Enable conf t. So I'm ready to configure both of those. Um, host, configure host names. Prevent unwanted DNS. No IP domain lookup. Um, 
And all that does is if I try to run a command that doesn't exist, it doesn't try to resolve that to a, an IP address. Dom. And because there is another IP domain command, um, it doesn't tab complete until I get to look up, until I get to the first, to the L. So uh, prevent unwanted, that's done. Configure interfaces. Interface descriptions for the ports. Uh, I don't feel like doing interface descriptions, so we won't. But what we will do is uh, set the default gateway from management VLAN to uh, but we did not configure the management VLAN yet. So uh, let's go through the notes. Uh, no, we can do that now. So IP default gateway is 192.168.10.1. That is the interface on R1, and we'll do it on the other side too. IP default gateway 192.168.10.1. Okay, uh, now we're going to configure VLAN 10 on both devices. Configure VLAN 10 or add VLAN 10 uh, and name it management. So I may have already done this on switch one, uh, VLAN 10, and name management, and VLAN 10, name management. So add VLAN 10 to one and two. Configure uh, IP addresses according to the addressing table for switch virtual interface for VLAN 10 on switch one and two. Enable the switch virtual interfaces and provide a description for the interface. So um, first thing I'm gonna do is get out of VLAN configuration and I am going to go into the interface for VLAN 10. Um, give it an IP address. Uh, address 192.168.10.201 and that is uh, 255.255.255.0 and okay I'll give it a description management SVI there we go and no shutdown there. And we will repeat on this side, obviously, with a different IP address. On switch two, we can go interface VLAN 10 and IP, let's get a, get a prompt so we can see, IP address 192.168.10.202. Ten dot two o two, and if you look, we were two o one on this side, two o two on this side. Um, obviously, they need to be different because they're different devices, and these are accessible, uh, and they shouldn't be this different. They should adhere to IPv four rules. So, uh, fix that mistake. Okay, two five five two five five two five five dot zero, and. Uh, we'll give it a description as well. Management SVI and a no shutdown. Okay, uh, let's see. It looks like we're up to step three. Configure VLAN 333 with the name native on S1 and S2. So exit the interface configuration on both sides. And we will do VLAN 333 name native. And here we will do VLAN 333 name native. Um, and then the next step is configure VLAN 999 parking lot on S1 and S2. So we can exit and exit, and we're going to do VLAN 999 
name parking lot. And the same here. VLAN 999 name parking lot. Okay, so that is kind of the just the preparation work. Now we're actually going to get into 8021Q trunking, which is the link if we just move the, this out of the way for now, that is the link between the two switch ports. So that's saying we have a trunk link going there. And that is on, if we go back to the top, that's faster, fast ethernet zero one on both switches. That's how we get uh, the trunk link across there. So uh, back to here. Uh, on both switches, configure trunking on F01 to use VLAN 333 as a native VLAN. And once we do that, we will show interface trunk. So uh, let's get out of the VLAN configuration on both switches. And we're going to do interface F01. And we're going to say switch port mode trunk. Switch port mode trunk and um, we also want to and if you watch now we're getting some weird stuff going on over here in consistent port type um, because we only configured it on one side so we're gonna now we'll do the native VLAN here and that will we'll see trunk native VLAN, we will see more issues over here once we make this a trunk port as well. So native VLAN 333. And uh, now receive BPDU and consistent peer VLAN ID 3333. So it's kind of there, we're confusing them because they're not configured the same. So the next step is configure this one to match that one. We go interface F01 and switch port mode trunk. And now we can do switch port trunk. Uh, now still there is a native VLAN mismatch. If you ever see this, this means that you have uh, in this case, on switch two, native VLAN is default one. On switch one, we set it to 333. So we need to have them match. Um, and actually, before we have them match, let's just see what it looks like when we don't. Uh, I'm not going to exit all the way out. I'll do show interface trunk. And obviously, things are bothered. So we have a native VLAN 333. And here we have uh, do show int trunk native VLAN one. So if you're ever running into a situation where you see native VLAN mismatch, that's just saying that these numbers don't match on both sides of the link. And they need to, in this case, it's 333. Three, three. In this case, it's one. So that's where we need to fix things. So we're going to fix them right now. Uh, like I said, and what is the fix? Well, depending on your configuration, the switch might be changed 333 back to 1, or in this case, it's telling us that it has to be 333. So uh, we are still on interface F01. We already set switch port mode trunk, so we just need to do switch port mode native. I'm sorry, switch port trunk native VLAN 333. There we go. And now unblocking port consistency restored and we still have native mismatch, but that'll open up in a second too. So if I run that show interface trunk again, we have native VLAN matches. We're now in good shape there. Um, And uh, do show interface trunk here. We have
VLANs allowed. Uh, okay. So we should be ready to go. So uh, disable DTP, dynamic trunking protocol. So um, that is where we are still in F01 here. We're going to go back into interface F01 here. Um, this is where it will try to share trunking between the ports and we don't want that. We, so we're going to do switch port non-negotiate. And here, switch port non-negotiate. Um, we can verify show interfaces. We can uh, disable the ETP. We can run this command show interfaces trunk and include non-negotiation. I will just cheat a little bit, copy and paste. And we need to do in front of that command, oops, because we are in configuration mode. So negotiation of trunking off and um, do and paste the same command here, trunking off. So that's what we need to see on both. Now we need to configure access ports. This is where we actually get into to security to make sure it doesn't negotiate a, uh, a port. So we have access ports. If we go back to the picture, we would see that on switch one, uh, I believe it's five and six. Uh, let's go back to the picture and confirm. Uh, this is here. On switch one, five is going up to R1, six is going down to PCA, and on switch two, uh, we just have 18. So we can, on switch one, configure five and six as access ports that are associated with VLAN 10. So uh, we need to, we are in interface one, we want to change that to uh, we're going to do a range. We're going to do five and six. So int range F05, and then we have a dash and six. So that's saying every interface between five and six. Obviously, that's just five and six, but now we're going to make them access ports. Switch port mode access, and then we need to say which VLAN they are access VLAN 10. And we will on switch two configure 18 the same way. So on switch two, we can exit this and we can go interface and we don't need to do a range because it is a single interface, 18. And that is also gonna be switch port mode access and Switch port access VLAN 10. So we have uh, step two done in this section. We configured both switches. Now comes one of those important parts, secure and disable unused ports. And what we're doing here is on switch one and switch two, move the unused ports from VLAN one to VLAN 999. That was a parking lot port. We're just kind of storing stuff there. And because we have all those ports, we want to act, we want to use a range to do it. So we are going to all unused. We on switch one, we have int range, and we're going to use F02. And remember, we have five and we have one in use as the trunk. We have five and six in use as going to the router and the PC. So we only go two to four, but then we're gonna do comma, and we're going to do the next batch of ports. F07, uh, zero, 07 zero, seven to 24, and um, depending on the device that I have here, let's see if it works. We should have a G, um, zero, 01 and zero, 02. G, 
pz01 um, to 2. Let's see if that works. So that works. That defined this range. That This means we can do everything on here now. We're going to do switch port mode access. This is to prevent someone from plugging in and claiming their trunk port to do VLAN traversal. So we made them all access. Now we're going to put them on a, uh, a VLAN that really doesn't do anything. 999. And then we're also going to shut them down. So on the off chance someone is able to plug in and convince someone to turn on a port, they're still on a VLAN that doesn't go anywhere. And we just turned them all down, turned them all off. So we're going to do a comparable, not the same command over here. We want to do interface range. Inter oh, we are already in an interface. We will exit interface range is F02. Uh, Again, one is the trunk port. And we can go all the way up to 17 because we don't have, um, we have something plugged into port 18. We have one and 18 on this switch. So F019 through 24. And we have G01 and two. Uh, switch port mode access. Switch port access VLAN 999 and another shutdown. So now if we do show interfaces status, uh, let's get all the way out of this. Show interfaces status. We can see that we have, aside from the the, the ports that are plugged in that are showing connected, uh, we have everything else is disabled on 999. And we can do the same thing here and just confirm and show interfaces status. And we're getting VLAN 1 all the way down 999. Okay, so document and implement port security features. So here we're going to get into specifics of what they're looking for. The interfaces F06 on switch 1 and F18 on switch 2 are configured as access ports. In this step, you also configure port security on these two access ports. What this does is it keeps someone from walking up to PCA, unplugging it from the network, plugging in their laptop and being able to get onto the network. So we are going to, in switch one, issue uh, the, well, let's do this, issue the show port security interfaces. So we have uh, show port security interface F06. So we have Default is port security is disabled. Uh, status would be secure down. Violation mode shut down. Um, so these are our default settings that are there. We could do the same on ports on switch two. They don't even have us do that. So now we're going to actually turn some of that stuff on. So configure terminal, and we're going to go back into. Um, Let's see, we displayed. So now we're going to, we want to set maximum number of MAC addresses to three, violation restrict, aging time is 60, and inactivity uh, is what defines aging. Uh, so when I gave the example of this keeps someone from unplugging and plugging in their laptop, well, no, this is actually configured so that someone could theoretically do that if they wanted to. But we only have three MAC addresses, so it keeps someone from churning through MAC addresses and doing a, um, an attack on the ARC tables or some other kinds of um, switch attacks. So we're going to do, we are, we, let me get my notes back to where we were. Here we go. Um, on switch one, 
we need to be on interface F06 and we need switch port, port security. Now we need to do some settings on there. So that will turn it on, switch port, port security, max, maximum three, uh, based on what we were told to do in the lab. And then switch port, port security, violation, restrict. This is what we do if there is a violation of the uh, three MAC addresses and switch port, Port security, aging time 60, and finally switch port, port security, aging type, type uh, what did I do wrong? Aging type and activity. Is it not? Let's see, this is different from my notes. So what are our options under aging? Um, it doesn't give a type. Aging, port security. Okay, so we'll leave that setting off, but that's what it would be looking for there. And a different version of iOS might have this setting. And that's what we need there. So now we will um, verify. We will do show port security interface F06. Uh, now we are enabled, secure up, restrict 60 minutes. It, uh, this is absolute instead of inactivity and disabled. So um, now we have a slightly different uh, setting here, but it is really just repetition. So I'm going to leave off the configuration of port security on switch two, and we're going to look at uh, DHCP snooping. So um, on switch to enable DHCP snooping, configure DHCP snooping on VLAN 10, configure the trunk port on switch to as a trusted port, and um, uh, configure trunk port switch to as a trusted port, limit the untrusted port F18 on switch to to five DHCP packets per second. So we're gonna just go through this setting. Uh, configure a terminal. Uh, we want IP DHCP and we could do relay, we could do pool, those are things that you we've seen before, but we're going to do snooping now. And then we can do IP DHCP snooping and if we do this, our options, we already did the return, carriage return on that, we're going to do a VLAN. VLAN and they said VLAN 10. Uh, so now we have it turned on. Now we need to configure uh, the trunk port on S2 as a trusted port. So we go interface F01, which is our trunk port, and IP DHCP snooping. And uh, our question mark now is limit or trust. So we're going to do oops, snooping trust. And then we limit the untrusted port. So we're gonna to go to a different interface. I'm not gonna bother exiting out. I'm just gonna do F018. And we can now do IP DHCP snooping limit. And here we're looking at rate. And now it's a number between zero and 2048. And in our, or one and 2048. In our case, we're gonna go with five and we can do uh, we can verify this do show IP DHCP 
snooping. And there it is. So trusted yes, trusted no, rate limit unlimited, rate limit five. Okay. Uh, now we're going to do port fast and BPDU guard. And this actually will give us something that we can look at and test out. Uh, we're going to start with um, switch one, interface five and six. So we can exit here, go to interface range F zero five six, and we want spanning tree port fast and it is configured. Now before we go to look at and do that on switch two, I want to show you what one of well I want to show you what it does. So if we unplug this cable from PCA into switch two and plug it in, this was plugged into port 18, you see how it's orange? It takes 30 seconds while it uh, goes through a process. Port fast means that if we unplug PCA and plug it back in, and this was plugged into six, it's green immediately. So we can now go back to switch two and do the same configuration. We want to go on switch two into F018. I don't remember which port we were in, so we'll do that. Uh, I think we were on F018. Interface F018 and we will do spanning tree port fast. Um, now let's just take a quick look at that again. You remember last time we unplugged it and went orange before we, after a while. Now we plug it in, it's green immediately. Uh, now we're going to enable BPDU guard on uh, switch one and two VLAN 10 access ports connected to PCA and PCB. So basically this is saying we should not get any trunking uh, information on these, on these ports. And if that does happen, shut them down. So we want interface F06 and we'll do spanning tree BP PDU guard enable. And now we can do the same thing over here. Uh, we are still on 18, so spanning tree BPDU guard enable. Uh, so we're going to do a verify on that by you see here, show spanning tree interface F06 detail, and we can get out of this so I can just run the command. Show spanning tree in interface F06 detail. And here we have the information we're expecting to see, and the port is in port fast mode, BPDU guard, uh, we did turn it on and I don't see it listed. Um, could be a difference in uh, iOS version. So let's just run it over here. Also, this is 18. So show spanning tree interface F018 detail. Uh, again, the port is in port fast mode. So um, we could ping between uh, all devices. Uh, I'm not going to bother with that. I didn't do any configuration on the, on the actual PCs, uh, but that is pretty straightforward. So uh, this should cover everything that you need to do in those packet tracer uh, labs. It's just all kind of combined together. I know it's a lot of stuff, but if you take it one step at a time, one piece at a time, you can kind of follow along and do the same things that I did in this lab in the packet tracers. So with that, uh, that's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching.